component of your decision is going to be who your audience is. And, uh, and there are a couple of ways uh, to look at that. Are you, uh, are you targeting some uh, broad cross-section of people, like all the residents in Ogden? Or, or are you targeting a specific niche? Or maybe you can have a functionality that's targeted to uh, 18 to 25 year olds. Or maybe it's targeted to, uh, to women or certain people in a certain income bracket. Uh, if you are targeting, then it's important to keep in mind that the behaviors, the usage models, and the ownership of these devices varies quite a bit among the different segments. So if you're looking, for example, to target the higher socioeconomic brackets, or people who make more money, um, maybe whatever reason, the functionality that you intend to deliver is, you know, is best targeted to those groups, uh, then it can make a lot of sense to do a native app uh, because the penetration, the ownership of, of uh, in particular iOS devices is much higher as the income goes up. Not only that, the click-through rate. Click-through rate you, you can take the exact same app. I see this in our apps, um, and it's been well documented uh, by many other people in the industry. We produce, when we make an app uh, for Ogden, and we, we make an iOS version and we make an Android version. Uh, now, our Ogden app doesn't have ads in it, but some of our apps have ads, and the click-through rate on ads is always higher on iOS. I don't know why, but it is. And uh, it's well documented in, in the industry. So if you're depending on click-through rate, then there's you know, some information to, uh, to keep in mind. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, another, another thing about audiences, um, keep in mind where are they? And what are they doing when you're trying to reach them? Are you only trying to reach them when they're on the go? Or are you, is there going to be a need to deliver the same functionality in other circumstances, like when they're at their desktop computer. Are you going to need a version of this functionality that, that runs on a desktop computer that can be accessed on a desktop? Uh, are you going to want to get their attention and deliver this functionality when they're looking at their Facebook page? Uh, or when they've got their PlayStation? Or when they get you know their, their new internet connected TV? And are you going to, is it going to be meaningful for you to put a widget TV widget on uh, to, to be able to reach them. Each one of these environments, when you talk about native apps, now uh, what was an expensive proposition to begin with is just multiplied dramatically. If you're going to build a native iOS app, a native Android version, and then you're going to build that functionality as a Facebook app, and you got to also build it as a website. You can see this thing starts compounding. And, um, and so pretty quickly, it starts to make sense. If, you, if, if this is functionality that you need to, to uh, put in front of an audience on multiple platforms in multiple circumstances, it starts to drive you pretty quickly for uh, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, you know, traditional mobile web uh, kind of solution. So. Excuse me, so this is uh, um, one of the important aspects. Uh, so let's talk a bit more about the kinds of functionality and how those come into play. So we already said the native experience, you know, is where you get your richest user experience, the most immersive and uh, uh, integrated functionality. Uh, and a big part of the reason is because uh, when you build a native app, whether, you know, regardless of which platform it is, you have access to APIs. And uh, HTML5 is, is rapidly changing the landscape in this area. So, so watch this closely. But there are still a, a few hardware things that you can't access unless you're building a native app. Uh, a camera is often to access without having a native app. Uh, some
some, some parts of the, sometimes you can access the accelerometers kind of information, but you may not be able to do it in a, in a way that really lets you, you know, be really responsive. You know, a 3D gaming system that relies on, you know, you tilting the device would, would not be likely to function well. Data caching, uh, you're, you know, in the HTML5 world, there is uh, you know, one of the newer capabilities over the past year is offline, um, offline caching. So in theory, you can build a mobile website that can cache data and work when there's no connectivity. In practice, it's still a bit clunky. Um, you still get a lot better performance. So, uh, so if you're building an app that people are going to use when they're hiking, cell tower in the area, well, then you may, may be driven toward a native app where they can download and store and have those maps available to them, even when there's no cell coverage. Any questions? So distribution, this is one of the biggest, most difficult challenges you're going to face. Those are easy. Uh, lots and lots of them. If you want to build in something and you don't have an idea, uh, talk to me afterwards. I'll, I'll ship a bunch of ideas that I don't have time to work on. And you can have them for free. Because uh, they're not, <clears throat> an idea's not worth anything. Um, it's the work behind it that makes it worthwhile. So, um, so you build this app. Somebody's going to find you when they bring up their uh, their, their uh, Google search tool or Bing or whatever search tool in their browser on their mobile device or possibly even on their desktop. Right? They'll search for some keywords that are related to the functionality, and you might show up if your page rank is good. You just rely on all the usual SEO uh, uh, kinds of things that you do to make sure that you show up. But, but that's where people will, will have a chance to find you. If you build a native app, uh, although a standard part of being in the app stores is that you get a, you get a web page for each app, right? uh, the uh, iTunes and the um, Android market, it's called now Play, Play Market, Google Play. Um, so they, they create a web page um, for your app, um, but those pages typically do very poorly uh, in page rank, so they don't show up you know, very often in response to a search. So if you are doing a native app, then you're almost certainly going to, if you're, you know, if you're counting on search, you're almost certainly re uh, relying on the fact that the people are going to go into the market from their search. They're not going to just pop open their browser and search. Um, and that friction is significant. It doesn't sound like much, but on, on, you know, I guess probably everybody here has a smartphone and it's just a lot easier to hit your browser or maybe hit that voice button and you just say something and the search goes right out versus hitting the app store thing and waiting for that to load and then you hit another search thing and you get to type it in and then you wait for that result to load. Um, are you going to be counting on people sharing your app, the word of mouth distribution? If I want to tell you about an app I like and it's a mobile website, it's really easy for me to do that. I just send you a URL. Um, now I can send you an iTunes or uh, an Android Market URL. A lot of people don't know how to get that. I mean, they can be <coughs> in the market, especially if you're on your phone looking at it. Um, there are ways to share, but they're they're more cumbersome. And they're not as as uh, uh, not as easy to do or recognize. So a large you, you will lose a large part of the population. If you're just counting on word of mouth with a native app. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
ownership. Um, now this encompasses a couple of different things. First of all, what skills do you need to build one of these solutions? Well, if you're building a mobile website, HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript, and you're, you're in great shape. And those are technologies that have been around. Well, HTML5 is, is, is newer, but, but HTML in general, of course, has been around for a long time, CSS and JavaScript. Lots and lots of people know. So, you know, so number one, it's not terribly complex to learn. There's, uh, there's not an infinite body of knowledge to learn. And if you don't want to learn, if you want to hire somebody, there are a lot of people who know these, these technologies. So getting the skills to, uh, to build a mobile website not, you know, not uh, insurmountable. You want to do a native app, uh, now you have all these other layers. 